Hi guys, uh, it's really nice to be in Australia. Um, yeah, I'd just like to introduce to you our project, the BridgeX Network. Um, before I get into the slides, um, we're actually a company that has already been running for the past two and a half years. We come from the traditional fintech industry and we've been doing FX conversions and cross-border payments. So that's how it really all started um, two years ago. Um, a couple of us sat down as friends. We decided to, to start um, doing this from our traditional um, backgrounds in, in, in law firms and banks. And two years later, we've actually come with, um, into the blockchain space. Um, we've come into the blockchain space already experienced in traditional FX conversions and cross-border payment flows. And we bring to the crypto space three licenses that we've already obtained in Singapore, Indonesia, and Hong Kong. Also, some of the um, VCs that have already backed us in our previous project um, are 500 Startups, BNext, and BCA Bank, which I think some of you might know to be the largest lender in Southeast Asia and one of Indonesia's biggest banks. So that's a little bit of the backdrop into how we started at, um, with Bridgex Network. So at Bridgex Network, what we are trying to do here is to build banking infrastructure for the crypto space. So this actually comprises of our three pillars of loans, FX conversions, and cross-border payments. Essentially, what we are trying to do here for the crypto space is to help people with crypto assets access the traditional world of fiat in a more, um, in an easier manner. So the problems here that we have been already facilitating for the traditional world that now we want to solve for the crypto space is twofold. Um, firstly, um, the first would be ad, um, access to the traditional world of fiat. Um, as you guys may currently know, um, there's a, still a lack of interoperability between um, the worlds of cryptocurrency and fiat, whereby I think crypto holders in the space are still finding very limited ways to access um, the world of fiat. Secondly, I think it still remains very cumbersome and very um, um, expensive to be transferring monies um, in the crypto, um, in the traditional space. And it's, 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 um, there are one or two extra steps if you're taking monies from the crypto world into the traditional world. Secondly, from um, in our loans um, aspect, um, we're trying to provide people in the crypto space very democratic access to credit. Um, as you know, I think most of you understand that if you owned traditional assets like equities or gold or property, you, um, banks recognize this as valid collateral if you're intending to take out things like a loan. But for, for an increasing number of people with an um, with, uh, increasing portfolio of crypto assets, um, traditional finance players don't recognize our assets as a valid asset in order um, for us to gain access to credit. And this becomes a problem because without access to credit, it becomes difficult for, I think, the crypto ecosystem to grow. So over here in our loans portion, we are actually um, um, trying to provide people with crypto assets the ability to access um, loans via pledging their crypto assets as collateral. So over here, this is a very high um, level overview of the solution that we are trying to provide. Um, like I mentioned to you earlier, our solution is a three-pillar solution of decentralized loans, FX conversions, and cross-border payments. To break it down to you a little bit more, in our loans component, this is going to be the completely decentralized aspect of our business, which is going to be hosted on the Ethereum blockchain. So it, um, what, what really happens is that a borrower, like any one of you, here with maybe 10 ETH. Um, right now, you'd be able to come on board our loans, our crypto to crypto loans marketplace as either a lender or a borrower. You'd be able to either lend this ETH out for an interest, or you'd be able to actually collateralize this 10 ETH to access a loan. That means you're actually putting up your crypto assets as security in order to, um, to access a loan. Um, this is also going to be hosted completely um, on the blockchain. So it's completely decentralized. And what that means is that for us, we are simply a, a third party that is facilitating um, the matching between lending and borrowers. So once lenders and borrowers actually have their loan matched, um, this actually goes up into the blockchain space. 
and the loan becomes completely decentralized, meaning that the lender and borrower throughout the tenure of the loan tenure um, gets to deal in, 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 in that manner. Um, and we as a third party are non-custodial. Um, we also don't have control of these assets. And this is very unlike banks who actually take the assets as custody. And you know which in, in traditional systems, in a custodial um, kind of situation, if anything happens to a centralized institution, that's where um, either lenders or borrowers are exposed. So this is, this is the decentralized part of our business. What we are really um, trying to do in our conversions and payments aspect is to allow right now people in the crypto space with, with crypto assets or crypto loans that they have borrowed to access the traditional world of fiat. So you could call this um, part of our business a crypto to fiat gateway. What we basically do is take crypto. We are able to convert your crypto into more than 30 different fiat currencies. And we are then, um, you're then able to, on the same platform, send the fiat currencies that you have converted into any one of 180 countries which we already have payment access to. So I think this becomes um, very convenient as a platform because when you come onto the BridgeX network, what you're able to do is to either lend, borrow, convert your crypto assets into any one of the fiat currencies that we provide, and send these currencies to anywhere around the world. Um, where we really differentiate ourselves um, with, um, with our existing competitors um, in the loan space, you might have heard of companies like Ethland or Nexo or Libra Credit. Most of these players are currently one-sided marketplaces, which means that as a platform, all you are actually able to do is get on board and come on board as a borrower. Basically, you go to the landing page and they say, access a loan. But you aren't able to come on board as a lender to earn an interest on your crypto assets. So for us, we're actually a two-sided marketplace, aside from having financial institutions and accredited lenders that can come on board on the supply side, we also allow ordinary people to come on board as lenders um, to earn an interest. Um, secondly, we are, we are also going to be adopting a collateral-based assessment. So this means that people in the crypto space, they don't have to go through credit scoring or have their credit history checked. Um, this allows us to actually give you guys access to fairly instant loans because we don't have to go through that process of checking your credit score. The way this works as well is that um, um, the loans are fully secured, meaning that if you have 10 ETH, you'd only be able to access um, maybe six to eight ETH, something slightly less than what you've put up as security and that g uh, allows the lenders to be fully secured. And with regards to our crypto to fiat gateway, we don't actually see any player in the industry currently that's actually able to, to um, provide seamless transfers into um, that many currencies that we have and to be able to send payments then to anywhere around the world. So I think in total, if you look at our BridgeX platform, what you're seeing in loans, conversions and payments, there are existing solutions which are doing loans or doing maybe a particular currency flow from maybe USD to um, Philippine peso or USD to Singapore dollar. But you don't actually see, um, we don't actually see anybody in the space able to provide you all these functions in, in a single um, network. Yeah, and coming back to the overview of our project, um, we are, we, um, our, the platform that we are building is simply going to be the first proof of concept of our technology. So what we are going to be doing here is actually open sourcing the technology that we are building to allow other players in the crypto space or traditional finance services to be able to plug into our technology and either come on board as a service provider to other people in the crypto space or to allow existing crypto players um, and companies to, to offer these new services to users on their existing platforms. So I think to give you a very good example of how a third party would be able to plug into our technology um, in the loans aspect, a uh, crypto to crypto exchange right now, um, where you're only able to buy um, a current, uh, buy maybe Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, if they plug into our decentralized loans um, tech, um, what they would then be able to do is to offer customers things like margin trading or short selling. Um, should they come on board to our fiat aspect as well, um, they could effectively become a crypto to fiat exchange rather than just a crypto to crypto exchange. And I think for, 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 the fiat, for the fiat portion of the business, 
um, what we are allowing um, companies to do, like I am Token, which is the world's largest Ethereum wallet, is to be able to help them f um, um, transit from just being a crypto wallet itself to be able to offer out their more than six million users um, fiat wallets. So I think this, this as, as a network, it's, it's quite dynamic because we're actually allowing the participation of, peop of ordinary people in the crypto space, um, the whole gamut of players in the crypto finance industry, as well as giving the opportunity for traditional finance players to enter um, the crypto economy. So as, as mentioned, these are some of the network participants that the Bridgex network would be able to host. You have individual lenders and borrowers, you have long-term crypto investors and day traders. But everybody from every um, crypto company, from, from, mi from mining companies to crypto exchanges to ICO companies or crypto wallets would be able to come in and use um, a portion of our services. So this is, uh, this is a nice overview of the management team we have at the Bridgex Network. Um, it, we, we come from a, a whole range of, um, of, of, of fields. Um, I myself was a lawyer before I stepped into the finance space as a trader. Um, our, our founders, Jody, uh, my co-founders, Jody and Hero, um, they, they are the guys that are still running the existing company that I, I shared with you earlier about, which has the licenses and our expertise in, in FX conversions and crypto payments. Um, we also have some guys um, from, from UOB, um, our CTO, Joseph, was formerly from Kyber Network. I'm not sure if, an, um, a show of hands, if anybody of you have, have heard of Kyber Network. Yeah, so he, he actually built out the trading platform for Kyber Network, and he comes to us now full-time as our CTO um, because of the very unique blend of blockchain expertise that he has um, and expertise in, in, in building um, trading platforms. Also, um, we have got the former head of business development at, at Grab coming on for us for partnerships and strategy. Also, I think the, the advisors that we have range from people who are very experienced in the crypto space. You guys might have heard of Digix, which was the first ICO to have raised um, on Ethereum. We also have um, Chaikit, who, who is um, experienced in KYC and compliance. We have Holon, who was an ex executive advisor to Kyber Network, and who's currently the head of FX at Stanchart. Um, as well as Peifu from the VC world and Li Minghan from, from, from UOB. So I think it's a, it's a whole mix of people we have from, from the traditional blockchain, um, the, the blockchain space and traditional finance. And um, yeah, we feel that, that um, in terms of product development timeline, we, we'd already be able to launch our product um, by our estimated end of the ICO in, in October. And we are looking to already service uh, many ICO companies and partners that we are o we have already onboarded or that we are still in talks with. So yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.